everybody. All righty. So, I wasn't really planning on doing these, but this is the second one this week. Because there is just some really strange energy going on right now. So today was particularly heavy and sad. So I thought it would be good for me to come in here because whenever something like this happens, whenever there is, you know, an extreme energy, I'm not going to sit and wallow in it. And I would highly recommend that you don't do that either. What we can do is self-care and self-care is proactive. So I immediately went to my wellness tools. But first I was trying to figure out what was going on because I'm the sort of person that I wake up before an alarm. I'm up before 6 a.m. I fly out of bed. I'm excited to start the day. I love everything that I do in both of my multi-careers. And today I had to drag myself out of bed at 7.30 in the morning. That is extremely unusual. And as my friend Michelle said, if Allie is still in bed at 7.30, there's something wrong in the world. And that is absolutely true. And I started researching and I started tapping in about, okay, what's going on? First thing I always do is check the Schumann resonance of the planet. And yeah, we've been spiking and crashing, spiking and crashing this week. Um, the crashes should not, like intuitively, I don't think the crashes should make us sad and heavy, but I think it's like being on a roller coaster. And after a while, you basically just want to vomit and get off, <laughs> right? So these spikes and crashes in energy combined with the energy around the world that is picking up strength since the pandemic was announced in March, at least here in the U.S. It was announced in March. It takes a while for energy to latch onto other energy and build like a snowball going down a hill. And I think that snowball is now big enough that everybody's feeling it. There's a lot of anger. There's a lot of fear in the world. Um, I mean, just, was it yesterday? Or, like, I'm totally losing track of time because of the energy. Maybe it was two days ago. Here where I live, um, not too far, just a few miles away from where I live in Michigan, Somebody died because of a mask. He was walking into a store and an elderly man with a mask commented, I don't know what he said, I don't know the tone of the voice, but commented that we now here in Michigan are mandated to wear masks in public. It's not an option. So it's like, you know what people, just get over it and just do it. Cause it's, we have to. And you can, you can fight all the energy that you want, but that fighting energy puts anger and fear out in the world. So sometimes we've just got to surrender, <laughs> right? Doesn't mean we give up and we give up our rights, but it's like just fight the things that you can, do the things that you can for yourself and stop fighting things that, that you can't change, okay? So anyway, whatever transpired, the man without the mask stabbed the elderly man with the mask. He's fine, he's in stable condition in the hospital. And then the stabber guy without the mask went off running into a neighborhood. A police officer chased him, found him. The man with the knives and the mask went towards the officer. She retreated, tried to get him to stand down, and he didn't, and he's now dead. As a former prosecutor, you know what? <laughs> you, do, you do stupid crap like that, you're going to die. There's nothing racial about it at all. It's just this is the energy that we're in. And, and it's not that I'm particularly sad about that, but I don't know. I don't know what the energy is. Otherwise, it other, other than it is picking up speed, like a snowball going down a hill. And it's sad and it's heavy. 
Now, when we have spikes in the planet, if you are attuned to energy, if you're using all of your energy tools, if you are sufficiently grounded and ascending in your energy, you can get the highs from it and it feels great. And when it crashes, you shouldn't get the lows. I mean, you just shouldn't. So I'm still not entirely sure what's going on. Other than I think the human energy is now so strong and so thick that none of us are immune from it. None of us are invincible. And especially those of us working with energy, we can really be hit by it. So what did I do? Well, the first thing that I did, and of course I forgot to bring it, um, I have a biofeedback machine called Itovi, and it scans my body for the essential oil products that my body needs in that snapshot moment in time. And the oils that were recommended were bizarre to me. Bizarre. The number one was wintergreen. Now, when I look at wintergreen, energetically it bans balances you know, the entire energy system. Um, but number two on the list was our new oil, cassia. Okay, cassia is like a softer cinnamon. So cassia works energetically. So I've been worried, I've only had this for a couple of weeks. Um, and, and it's pretty clear that cassia works energetically on releasing worthlessness and feeling unimportant. Now, was I feeling worthless or unimportant? No, because I had a kick-ass day yesterday. I mean, I was a featured speaker at a women's networking group. I spent, my dad was in town, we had lunch, and then I went and hosted an essential oil perfume party for one of my people. It was awesome. I had an awesome day, but other people's worthlessness and unimportance, I think, got to me. I do, because I saw it in people, that they're going out in public for the first time, and they may feel like, well, nobody else is wearing a mask. Maybe I should drop my guard. And it's like, no, don't, don't follow the crowd. Do what you need to do, whatever it is. If you don't want to wear a mask, if you do want to wear a mask, just do what you want to do. So I could have picked up some of that. I don't know. But here's the thing. With Cassia, with the worthlessness and the feeling unimportant, those feelings mean that we're separated from our source energy and from our higher self. We are separated from it. This oil, cassia, which is a biblical oil, helps us recognize, and it's tickling my nose, <laughs> it helps us recognize that we have a part to play in this world and in helping others. Okay? So it doesn't matter what your part is, you got a part to play. Okay? So this is like, Mother Nature has a play that she's putting on. You got your part. You better know your lines. Okay? Cassia. Because we all got a part. So don't, don't check out. Don't check out. We all have a part to play. Do not check out. In hard energy, peop, light workers, energy workers, anybody working with energy tools, we don't have the privilege of checking out. We check up. Because we got to help everybody else. Okay? You got tools, use them. So I'm going to show you the tools that I used. Now, because it was a sad, heavy energy, I always go to Frank. I always go to frankincense. Doesn't matter if it's sacred frankincense or the, um, uh, uh, the uh, oh my God, I'm totally missing it. I call it regular Frank. What is it called? Boswellia Carteret. <laughs> regular Frank. <laughs> Now, frankincense works on the lung meridian, and that's where we store grief. And a lot of grief is bubbling up right now. Grief from the world that we have lost, because we're birthing into a new world. People are having a hard time letting go of the old world. It could be, you know, grief from changes that we're seeing in the world that scare us and threaten our freedom. Grief for people and pets that we've lost, that we know and maybe we don't know. You know, grief for the loss of businesses and the fear from the grief of the financial instability of the pandemic. You know, grief for feeling powerlessness and ancestral grief that comes from past generations that is in all of us. Frankincense. 
So what I've been doing all day is I have been diffusing Frank and Cassia, and I'll tell you, it is divine. And my cat, Rudy, would not leave my office where I have been diffusing it. And so when people say, well, you know, Cassia, it's, you know, from the cinnamon family. It's a hot oil. You can't use it with cats. <clears throat> no, I'm sorry. I reject that. I reject that. As long as it's Young Living, it's totally safe. Rudy approves this. So these are the two oils that I started with. And then, and then there's more because I always layer the energy. Then I laid in a crystal grid. And this just, you know, I just start selecting crystals. And I'll tell you, it worked. So what I did was I surrounded myself with Moonstone. I got to tell you, I don't work a lot with Moonstone. I just don't. I have a ton of it. I just don't work a lot with it. But now I know why I have a ton of it because I surrounded myself with 17 Moonstone crystals. So Moonstone is really for those who are highly influenced by the moon. But it is very soothing and it helps with anxiety and depression. Um, it's a very motherly sort of crystal. And... I just decided I needed that mom energy around me. I needed it. And then I put carnelian, big old chunks of carnelian. I put these on my hip bone at the sacral chakra. So the color of the orange is from iron oxide. Iron is very grounding. Okay. So I needed to really connect to the earth. Um, the, the red that is in, I mean, you can see the red, the red that's in carnelian is fire and change. It's like, I, I'm a Leo. Okay. I am all about fire and whatever this heavy, sad energy was, somebody threw a wet blanket, a dirty, wet blanket on me. And it's like, no, mm -mm, I don't think so. So this is all about fire and change and the orange that is in the crystal, the brownish orange is all about moving into earth energy with courage. These are all about life force energy, overcoming negative patterns, overcoming depression because it, it energizes you and it helps you understand the cycle of life. So it's like, okay, if there's something subconscious going on with all of us where we're seeing the numbers of the people who are dying, people are dying every day from a lot of different things. And it's not to minimize what's happening, but we're so much more, more aware of it now if you're watching the news. Okay, stop watching the news. But if you have been, this is going to help understand the cycle of life. So I put this on. And then, oh, there's my moonstone. I actually brought a moonstone out to play. Moonstone is just, oh, it's like iridescent and opalescence. It's, oh, I just want to snack on it. Okay, then on my heart, I put kunzite. So kunzite, and this is an unusually large piece because when I need kunzite, I need an unusually large piece. Small pieces work just as fine. Kunzite is the stone of emotion. Um, it's all about inner peace and self-love. It contains lithium. Okay, what do we use lithium for? For people who have mental imbalance. For people with bipolar. I'm not saying we're bipolar. That's not it. But lithium is the uplifter. Okay, so this is this is going to uplift you. So I put, I put the kunzite on my heart, and that really helped. And I laid there with the cassia and the frankincense diffusing, all right? And that I laid there for like a half an hour this morning. And what was interesting is I didn't want to get out of the layout, but I made myself, just like I made myself get out of bed. If you've ever followed Mel Robbins and her rule of five, you count down five, four, three, two, one, launch. And that's what I did to get out of bed. And that's what I did to get out of my healing grid. And I came right into my office and I was productive. I didn't have to force myself. I was productive. So it lifted me out of it. Now, what else did I also do? What's, oh, I forgot to tell you at my crown, I had a pink Himalayan quartz at my crown. I wish I could just create a headband where I can put a pink Himalayan quartz or maybe I can have it as a unicorn. 
Um, but pink Himalayan quartz, any quartz will do, but I go towards the pink Himalayan quartz because of the heart aspect and the very high vibration of Himalayan um, quartz. So going back to my Itovi, my Itovi also scored me very high for the new oil, Gary's Light. Um, founded after uh, the founder of Young Living. This is all about a truth and discernment um, sort of oil. And so I have just been piling this all over me. I've been putting it on my crown, on my third eye, on my heart. I have been smelling it. I have been using this all day as well as joy. Because it's like, okay, the frankincense and the cassia is helping me with that sad, heavy energy. And now let's get out of it. Okay, you got to get out of it. So that's the thing that that I always recommend with any healing tool. You work on the root issue and then you get out of it. You change the energy, you go polar opposite. So if you're if you're too anxious, you got to ground yourself. If you're too sad, you got to raise yourself. You got to do the polar opposite. If you just do one, if you just work on the root issue, and then don't flip the energy. You'll feel good for a little bit, but not too long. And if you don't work on the root issue and just go right for the opposite energy, you haven't resolved the issue. So I went to Gary's Light and I went to Joy. And that really helped. That really helped a lot to raise my energy. Now, if, I mean, if you don't have any of these crystals or any of these oils, use what you have. Trust your intuition. I'm not going to tell you what to use. Use what you have. I'm telling you what I used for me and what helped me. But I wanted to give you kind of the message behind it so that you know what to go to in your toolbox that you have. Now, another thing, and I'm actually going to do it here right now. For some reason, I have lost five pendulums in my house. I do not know where they are. Um, so this is a necklace. It is a... Um, Tibetan black quartz on a necklace. Here's the thing with the pendulum. You just need to have a weight on a string. It can be, I have used a paper clip on the end of dental floss as a pendulum. So with a pendulum, I'm not gonna teach you how to program it because this technique doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. What you're going to do is you're gonna hold the pendulum equal to your solar plexus. And you're probably going to find that it starts going counterclockwise. What this is doing is it is unplugging and pulling out any energy cords in you that are not meant to be there. My goodness, look at that swing. Holy moly, the, the bigger it swings, the more cords you have in you that are not beneficial. So it is pulling all the energy cords. You don't cut an energy cord because it's still in you and it's easy to reattach. You want to pull them out. Now here's the thing. When you pull something out, you got to replace it. Just like I was talking about with the oils and the crystals, you can work on the root issue, but then you got to flip the energy. You got to replace it. All right. So it is all on its own when it's done it's gonna go clockwise. And here she goes. Coolest technique ever. She is now filling the holes. Ooh, that feels awesome. I mean, it, it feels like I had all of these pinpricks in me and the energy is now being filled up. Now, sometimes I say things like, when it starts going counterclockwise to pull out the energy cords, I'll, I'll just ask the energy to transmute it. I don't want it detaching onto anybody else. Just transmute it and ascend it and take it away. And now, you know, fill the holes with the highest energy, the highest light for my highest good. That's it. That's all you got to do. The pendulum's going to do the work. It knows, knows what to do. You don't have to direct it. And when it's done, it will stop. Just like it did right now. This is a good technique. If you feel that you're taking on other people's energy, do that. That's really good to do uh, before bedtime. 
before bedtime. So a couple of last things. With this energy, it is really easy to check out. I've seen this, I mean, the whole time I've been doing energy work, you know, for a decade now. I see people checking out because it's Mercury retrograde and, you know, oh my gosh, I'm just not going to do anything. Or, you know, oh, we're in a, we're in a new moon. I have no energy or we're in a full moon and I'm crazy. And it's like, no, no. Capitalize on the energy, whatever it is, good or bad, and be proactive. Be proactive. Okay. If you are on this page, you are a proactive person and you have healing tools. Any healing tools that you have, use them. So be proactive because that's self-care. Sitting in front of the TV watching mindless stuff is not self-care at all. And you're going to feel worse. Scrolling endlessly and mindlessly on social media is not self-care. And you're going to feel worse. So be proactive. Use your oils. Use your crystals. Use energy healing. Use affirmations, mindset, tapping, Whatever you want to use, tuning forks, crystal singing bowls, go out in nature. Be proactive when this energy hits. Be a solution person. Don't ever pray to the problem. You pray to the solution. Second thing, this is a perfect time if you're feeling like these energies and they're starting to take you down. It is the perfect time to retrain your body to crave different comfort food. I know that's going to sound crazy. Don't get me wrong. I love my mac and cheese and my mashed potatoes. They make me feel horrible, but it's comfort food. But for years, I have retrained my body during times of stress to go for greens. So when I finish this, I'm going to have a big old plate of broccoli and Brussels sprouts because now I have trained my body during stressful times to eat good food because if you eat crap, you're going to feel worse. So do that. Do that today. If you've been feeling these energies, do that today and try it, try it. And you may feel like, oh, I still feel like I need comfort food. Stop yourself. You have free will. You have, you have total willpower over this, but give it a try. You're going to be amazed at how quickly you will be able to pull yourself out of these energies that way. And then number three, like I said, do not waste away in front of mindless television or social media, especially in this energy. Don't do it watch YouTube videos. So I now stream YouTube on my smart TV and, you know, I like to enhance my knowledge about what's happening right now. So find an astrologer, find a card reader, find a channeler, find a healer, find someone and go to their YouTube page. My YouTube page has hundreds of classes on it. You can go there. You can go there. Um, so don't, Go into that lower negative energy. Go into a more positive energy. Okay, that's all I got. Oh, I want to do one last thing. Um, I wanted to pull a card. And this is from the Keeper of the Light deck uh, by Kyle, uh, Kyle Gray. Mm -hmm. I love this deck. It is a very high vibrational deck. And I just wanted to leave us all with a message. So... This is for all of us, and we'll see. Oh, that card popped right up. Oh, the Miriam, Sacred Vision. Oh, you guys. I'm going to read you what the message is. Choose to forgive in order to heal. See the light in all. Remember that love has no boundaries. Well, there you go. In this heavy energy, that's what we need. So I'm going to leave you with that. All right. I hope you're, I hope you're all feeling, feeling good. So thanks for tuning in. It's nice to see you all. Yeah, Vicki, uh, Archangel Daniel uh, took the pendulums. I don't know where he put them. I'm missing like five of them. So I hope I find them. So anyway, uh, thanks for, for being here. And if we have any more unusual energy, I'm just going to keep doing these. I'm going to find solutions and share them. So take care, everybody. Have a good night.